Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to finish off this week with the creative request, which is where a smaller band gets in contact with me and asks me to check out their work. Today's comes out is from Altezia. I got an email that said, Hey dude, recently discovered your YouTube channel and loved your approach. Looks like we have some common tastes in music. Now let me recommend you an awesome, bombastic, freaking hell of a band, Altezia. Well, okay, it's my band, but it's so cool, I promise. We play progressive metal, we're from France, we got two albums out. If you listen to our music, we'd love to get some feedback. All the best, have a great day. So, let's dive into some Altezia. That email, it's got a nice uh, bit of a comedic timing to it. Really appreciate that. It uh, shows the band uh, doesn't take themselves too seriously in there. They're probably pretty fun to hang around. So, let's hit this. The track is called A Liar's Oath. Start off with a heavily compressed 4-4. Four four. A bit of silence to uh, drive that impact. So 16th notes over these uh, guitar ideas. Harmonies on two of the guitars. A hazy Still in the four. Really nice syncopated idea against it though. Love the bass driving this silence. Hiding his nature for a Really nice falsetto into this mix. Mostly rhythmic chord stuff, but that ride symbol is neat. That's a fun rhythmic idea. Really introducing a bit of groove for this bridge. Much like our opening verse, we have our uh, 16th notes on the, uh, the keyboard against what everyone else is doing.
beautiful transitioning of this idea. And I love how the uh, keyboarders got to join in on that run as well. was quite enjoyable. Um, not what I was expecting at all given the progressive rock uh, genre that was dropped in the email and the progressive metal hashtag that's used on the video. Um, it's actually a very light progressiveness. Um, which it works for sure. Uh, I want to dig into this first and then we'll get into the music um, and then hit the lyrics. Uh, the progressive elements are very sparsely utilized in a way that increases or retains the palatability of the generally pop rock elements that we're seeing in a couple of these mixed with uh, just standard modern rhythmic ideas. I'm not saying any of this uh, to demean what is going on here. I really enjoy what, what's happening here. Um, just to point that this doesn't feel progressive, at least not in the same spectrum as I typically think of progressive rock or metal. Um, but for instance, uh, we have use of counterpoint here. We have use of a bass line that isn't just repeating what the guitars are doing. There's a few places where the bass actually gets to stand out with its own moving idea. That doesn't necessarily lean towards prog, but it does happen in prog rock, especially a lot more often than it does in standard rock. Uh, we go into some really interesting keys, especially during the first guitar solo. Um, and the structure is slightly odd. It, we still have a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge chorus idea that though we do um, implant a guitar solo in between the first chorus and second verse and we do uh well no the bridge is the bridge there's not much different going on in the bridge so yeah we have a, a slight change of riffage that goes into a guitar solo that leads us into our final chorus. So yeah, even the structure is still close to standard, but a little different. Um, and that's where, I mean, you know, the, the structure, the chord choices, the note choices, um, even the instrumentation, we have this very uh, organ-like uh, uh, keyboard, which harkens back to the way that keyboards and organs were utilized in 70s prog rock. Um, there's a lot of moments in here that like I said, showcase a prog light, so to speak, where it takes very uh, typical conventions and modifies them just enough to help them stand out a bit without moving too far away from that palatability. I still think a lot of people uh, would be able to listen to this and enjoy it, where that statement is not always true about more full-on prog rock and prog metal bands. And again, I don't want to say that as a, a negative. I mean, we've talked before about bridge bands, and I think that this could be one of those where you uh, utilize sounds from something that is more palatable and introduce concepts from something that is less palatable in a way to help bridge people over to those less palatable ideas. 
And this is also just one track. I see they also have Mouth of the Sky. Uh, they have an entire album called Embryo. Uh, there's another video for The Confined Child. It could be that I got uh, their most simplest track and that they explore wildly different ideas in others where maybe they do lean more in towards a, a traditional progressive metal angle in those other tracks. Um, yeah, it see, says for fans of Haken, Vola, Opeth, Leprous, Between the Buried and Me, Caligula's Horse, Dream Theater, Wild Run, I don't personally, Haken, kind of. I can see a little bit of Haken in here. Um, I can see the production, especially of Dream Theater uh, and Haken and Modern Between the Buried and Me in here. But musically, I don't hear a lot of any of that. But again, it could just be this one track. I might have just picked the wrong. They do have a 10-minute track called The Confined Child, which definitely leans more <laughs> towards a progressive element. Um, okay, I might I might touch that at the end of the track. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll hit a couple of moments there just to uh, get a little taste of something else. Um, and that's just because I don't know that this is particularly uh, a proper showcase of y'all skills, uh, music, mu uh, musicianship wise and composition wise. But I do think that there's some good stuff going on here. So let's dig into that. Um, first of all, I love the texture layering. There's so many moments where the keyboardist will line up with what the guitars are doing or what the vocalist is doing and provide that texture layering right there. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, just a beautiful use of the keyboard, which only has two other modes that I picked up on. One is to play 16th notes over suspended guitar chords. That was done twice. And the other is to be the suspended chords, uh, which was utilized a couple of times. At least in my experience, the keyboard was mostly underutilized in most of this and was a textural element and didn't get too many moments to shine on its own compositionally. Again, not a bad thing, and it could just be relegated to this track, but it is something I noticed, and the keyboarders just didn't get a chance to, to do much on their own. Speaking of overlaying uh, textures with the guitar, the second, actually both guitar solos are beautiful as far as phrasing, movement, melodic writing. I really enjoy the style of uh, melody writing from both of the guitar solos. The way that ideas flowed into one another, called back to previous ideas, uh, just the general pacing of it all. There was times to show off a little bit of technique uh, and faster playing, times to hold back and really dig into the emotion of the line, and everything like flowed together just really nicely. I really enjoyed at the end of the second guitar solo, though, when we went into the tapping part, how you introduced that at the end of the last idea beautiful transition from the slower, more emotional side of the soloing into the flashier kind, but you also paired that with the keyboard doing a duet with the uh, the guitarist. Again, I think they were playing the same thing. It might have been harmonized, but it's still doing exactly what the guitar was doing. We got that layering in there, um, but it's just a really nice touch to turn that into a duet that wasn't two guitars, which is what most bands would end up doing if they wanted to turn a solo into a duet. Um, just a really nice way to also bring that into the next section, coming back into the chorus. The drummer was mostly sitting in a pocket, and a lot of this, there were a few moments where I could say that we had uh, little hints of more melodic drumming style. Uh, one of those was the ride cymbal idea in the second verse. Wonderful. I love that. That was so good. Uh, we also had a couple of really nice drum fills that I would like to see expanded into larger ideas in other tracks, but again, uh, we might see them in other tracks. Um, and the vocalist, I guess, would be the last thing I want to touch on here. I just really enjoy them. It's a very palatable, beautiful vocal style, uh, really nice controlled uh, chest voice. I love moving into the mixed for the chorus. It's just a very airy, dreamlike section, especially with all the suspended chords around it. And the, the falsetto that takes us into the chorus is very well done. Um, 
Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and... Oh, structure, yeah. So I mentioned that the structure is pretty typical. However, there is something really neat in that the two verses are different. They explore completely different riffs, emotions, atmospheres. In a sense, it is not A, B, A, B. Well, if we put the guitar solo in there, A, B, C, A, B. Um, it's more like A, B, C, D, B. So again, sort of this um, prog light where we do have a bit of a linearity in the first bit, even though it is verse, chorus, verse, chorus uh, on the larger idea. Uh, our two verses do explore different musical ideas, even if the vocal, I think the vocal melody was retained throughout both. So it was a nice half measure where we get a lot of variety while also retaining some of that familiarity. But then it's also split with the guitar solo between the, the chorus and the verse. So it's just like a little... Uh, a bunch of little ideas that help spice it up. And like I said, just really great way of doing that, of bringing some, uh, you know, more complex ideas into a more palatable structure. Um, so yeah, I think that's about that. Solid writing, beautiful moments, a uh, nice mix of rhythmic and melodic, especially with those genty moments that we got, like in the bridge, um, and mixing complex with simplicity to achieve something that is palatable, yet also, uh, you know, a little progressive. I'm going to hit the lyrics real quick. I really hope they're here because I don't want to go hunting for it. They are not. All right, I'm going to look real quick on Bandcamp and their homepage and hope I can find them. Otherwise, I think we're going to have to skip over. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We might have got this. Yes. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Altezia, for putting them on Bandcamp. They might also be on uh, some lyric sites, but with these smaller bands, it's kind of hit and miss. It's usually a, a last-ditch uh, effort for me to go look on uh, song lyrics or Genius and stuff like that. All right. Dead, forgotten, a hazy memory, secret soul, self-buried right behind a spacious smile, a silly clone hiding his nature for approval, lost in torment, I dreamt that day would come. All right, so we have a an aspect of this narrator who they're not too um, happy about. An aspect of themselves that feels like a clone, it's dead, it's forgotten, it's a hazy memory, it wants approval, it's lost in torment. And I could tell you that I fought my fate, I made event amends, and I could show you that I affirmed my will in vain. And I will never abuse your trust again, my words are clear, and I will lead you until your heart reveals its gleam. To find yourself, I can free your mind. So we have somebody who betrayed a friend's trust or a partner's trust and feels bad. They beat themselves up. They, have, they keep it all, this guilt, this torment, they keep it all inside. And they hope that uh, these words will begin to mend that relationship. It says, I will never abuse your trust again. Remorse, hurting, weakness evaporated, honor my oath, I stopped the rival that I once invented. Interesting idea, speaking of the duality within. And I could tell you that I fought my fate, I made, made amends, same thing, same thing. Erased the barriers and the walls I ran into before, I defeated my inner foe, despite my labor, vile opponents tried to ruin my vow, yet I gave my love to you all. And we repeat the idea. Uh, I could tell you I fought my fate, I made amends, and I showed you I affirmed my will in vain. Wait, that's different. No, it's not. So it almost sounds like um, this other person might not want to repair this bridge. Uh, it says that I, I could show you that I affirmed my will in vain says, but, you know, trust me, I'll, I'll never abuse your trust again. Um, but it almost sounds like this other person is more of uh, actions more than words. You can say things, but I want to see that you won't abuse my trust kind of thing. So, yeah, that's pretty much what this track is about. Uh, lyrically, it's very straightforward. 
Uh, it's about being upset with actions that you've done in the past, hurting people through those actions, hurting people you care about through those actions, and trying to make amends for that to work on yourself as a person to get rid of that aspect of yourself and to repair the bridge uh, between uh, the person that you hurt. Okay. I don't really see too much of a strong relationship between the music and the lyrics, but that is fine. I honestly see that often in more technical-oriented progressive rock and progressive metal. Um, it's usually in the older emotive style of progressive rock, especially 70s stuff, where a lot of the music is tied into the lyrical themes. But when we get to some more of the technical progressiveness of the modern style, we just kind of see less of that. Um, so let's hit this confined child. This is a band playthrough. It is 11 minutes long. I don't know if we're going to hit all of it, but I do just want to get a taste of maybe some other style of music that they play, just not only for myself, but also for anybody listening uh, who might be a little more interested in a different side of the band, possibly. <laughs> Very native construct. All right, so we're in like a like a seven four. Really interesting notes in there. Here's our, our odd rhythm determining a strange time signature. <laughs> now I'm starting to hear some dream theater stuff. Just gonna stop it there i i was tempted i was like what if i just did the whole thing um but it did remind me of something that i completely forgot to talk about the harmonies in uh what did we just listen to something about liars oath i think um yeah totally forgot to speak about the harmonies there we had some really beautiful harmonies leading into the bridge and I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then we went to the bridge with that five-way harmony of everybody in the band, which I really appreciate. Usually when we have larger harmonies like this, it might be just the vocalist backtracking themselves or maybe one other person in the band. But to see that all five people in the band are providing vocal work, it's just, I love seeing that. I do. Oh, man, it's so good. Um, and then to hear that continue on into the next section, I don't remember where they went after that, but we continued on with some of the uh, vocal harmonies uh, after reintroducing uh, the instrumentation as well. So yeah, I am going to check out more of this. <laughs> it's a weird way to say that. What is this, Altesia? Nice! An embryo is on uh, Apple Music, so came out last year oh october of lot dang i feel so bad with these re with these creator requests this is almost to date a year old i don't know how old the email was oh the email came in june so i'm not that far behind but i do feel bad a lot of these bands are like hey we're, re we're releasing a song in three weeks you think you can do it and i'm like oh geez i got a four month <laughs> wait list on this program <laughs> Uh, I'd love to do it with your release, but uh, it's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, I'll be I'll be checking this out because, like I said, that song right there, which I think came off of their 2019 album, "The Confined Child," that yeah, didn't come off of either of them. Interesting. When did that song come out? May of 2020. Interesting. So it was like a 
Oh, well, the video was May of 2020. I don't know when the song came out. Anyways, I am getting a bit rambly here. Anyways, that did remind me of Native Construct. I enjoyed Native Construct's album. I will definitely be checking out Altezzi on my own, so I'm going to listen to the whole Embryo album. And if I enjoy that, I'll probably go back to their 2019 album as well. Seven tracks, 57 minutes with a 21 and a half minute finale. Wow. All right. <laughs> that's going to be uh that's going to be quite a listen. Those are my thoughts on Altezia's What is this track? Why do, Liar's Oath. Why can't I remember that? I greatly enjoyed what it did. I did kind of expect a little bit more going in and I had to reevaluate, kind of uh, replace my expectations once the song got into it. Um, but I did end up enjoying it a lot more in retrospective once I was able to readjust my mindset and figure out what it was doing and really appreciate what they were going for and how they nailed it. Um, let me know your thoughts. You enjoyed it. You didn't enjoy it. Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on, let me know. Above the comment section, you can head into the description box. There are some links for me, but for the most part, I want to highlight Altezia's links. I have all of their streaming platforms and social media links there, as well as their website. Um, above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Make sure, if you're interested, head over to their channel. Like, subscribe, and ring their bell. Uh, that sounds a great... Go over there and ring their bell. Isn't that what people used to say, like, uh, when you get knocked out or concussion or, or dizzy? You got your bell rung? <laughs> Oh man, ring my bell. That does that just doesn't sound as nice anymore. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. We got an album review. Otherwise, you guys will see me on Monday for the next week's theme and we'll get into some more special selections. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.